Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on printer and scanner preventive maintenance. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to step through the requirements from our CompTIA exam 220-602, section 4.4, where we need to understand how to perform preventive maintenance of printers and scanners. So because this is from our 602 exam, it's one of the more advanced things we need to know when we're working with printers and scanners. So we'll talk about scheduling maintenance of these devices. We'll talk about how we can ensure we're having a suitable environment where we're working on preventive maintenance of these devices. There's more than you might think about. And we'll also talk about what supplies you're going to need if you're going to do preventive maintenance. First, let's talk about how we would schedule maintenance and what's important about scheduling maintenance for these printers and these scanners. First off, we're going to want to check the vendor's guidelines for doing preventive maintenance. The manufacturer may say after a certain number of printed pages or after a certain amount of time or between the times when you change out a toner cartridge or an inkjet cartridge, you're going to want to perform a certain set of tasks. So check the manufacturer's documentation for that specific printer to determine what you should be doing. This, of course, is important regardless of the type of printer, but it becomes even more important if this is a very large printer that's used in an enterprise environment, it has a mission critical function for what you're doing, or maybe it's a printer that cost a lot of money. And some of these larger laser printers can be multiple thousands of dollars. So you want to be sure you're taking care of it. One of the ways you can do when we're looking through the documentation is finding out very, very specifically what you should be doing for preventive maintenance. And these usually are extremely well written. Let me give you an example of one that I have on my system. So here's some documentation I have on my system. This is for my brother all-in-one printer. So this is a very simple printer and how it works. But even in the appendix, you can see there's an option for troubleshooting and routine maintenance, page 130. So the troubleshooting is useful for the things we were doing before. But if I forward through, it talks about what I can do for routine maintenance, how to replace the ink cartridges, and what to do associated with that. It even steps you through and gives you pictures for every step along the way. Also talks about cleaning the outside of the machine, exactly what you should use and what you should not use, and the process to go through and cleaning the scanner. So somebody says, I'm getting some bad printouts whenever I scan. I'd like to have this be cleaner. Tells you exactly what to do, even the place you should go if you need to scan things that are being scanned through the automatic document feeder, where you can clean the different rollers and the pickup rollers inside, the print heads, the quality, gives you an idea of exactly what to do. And so every manufacturer's output documentation has in there what you should do for preventive maintenance. So be sure to check with the one for your printer. Another nice technique to use when doing preventive maintenance is add it to your calendar. Know that every month you're going to perform some functions on a particular important printer that's in your environment, or maybe every quarter. So you can set it on your calendar exactly when you're going to go take care of that piece. Maybe it's something you can integrate into your help desk so that everybody who's in the help desk can then pull up what's connected to that printer, and it automatically creates a ticket every three months. Something that's very easy to do, and you'll be surprised how quickly those three months go by when you're back at that printer again and fixing that up. There's also something to think about when you're looking at these printers and scanners is that there are maintenance kits that you can either get from the manufacturer or from third parties that will begin to replace different rollers inside of the printer, begin to replace different, uh, different settings on the heads, replace different pieces inside that move a lot, especially with printers that have a lot of moving parts. They tend to wear out very quickly. So manufacturers have these great maintenance kits that go beyond just replacing the ink or replacing the toner cartridge and begin replacing the individual components that wear out inside of those devices. Whenever you're working with those, one of the things that it might say is that we need to do this every 5,000 pages or every 10,000 pages. So once you've performed that maintenance, there's usually a reset button for the printer that will reset the page counts so that later on you can go through and see, is it time to perform that expensive update again? We can look and see, well, there's only 1,000 pages that have been printed. We can wait a little bit longer. Maybe you're just checking on it every month, and when it hits a certain point, that's when you know to do that replacement process. Another thing that we've just talked about is cleaning that scanner glass. And I can't really say this enough because the glass on a scanner tends to get dirty very quickly. And so especially in environments where you're doing a lot of scans, it may be something that's just done every day. The morning before you begin scanning, you're automatically cleaning it. So make sure you have the right cleaning solution available and that it's being done on a very consistent basis. 
with anything that we're doing, we want to be sure that we're safe in the environment where we're working. And when you're performing preventive maintenance, you're usually taking apart a piece of electronics. So you want to be careful when working around electricity. Make sure that you are unplugging these printers, that you are unplugging what you're working on, the scanners, and it's physically disconnected from the power source. Even then, you want to be careful because especially in laser printers, there are very large capacitors in there that could store some power. You want to be careful that you don't accidentally electrocute yourself. These printers, especially laser printers, can get really hot inside. So if this printer was used during the day and you're going in right after somebody's done some printouts, you may find there's some components in there that can really leave a nasty burn on your skin. So be very careful when working around these laser printers or copiers that you don't burn yourself on some of the components inside of there. Now I learned about this the hard way. The, this toner that's inside of there is just dust. It is these very small granulars, uh, granules of carbon. And if they get out, they go everywhere. And if it's a damaged toner cartridge, it can get on your skin, on your clothing, on the printer, on the floor, on the table. It goes everywhere. It's dust. And so you need to be able to clean that up if it ever sneaks out of there. Cold water works really well, not warm water, because this melts. It's designed to melt onto paper. So if you use really cold water, it cleans up really easily. You want to be careful when you're working around ink for an inkjet cartridge that you're not throwing that ink cartridge around whenever you're using it, because it can come out of there, and then the ink will be all over the place. So be careful when you're working around these components. They can really make a mess sometimes. And be aware of your surroundings. If you're working out with a printer that's out in the middle of the floor where everybody's going by, make sure you don't put your devices or you're taking apart the printer. Make sure you're not putting them where people are starting to walk. They're not expecting anything to be there. It's normally not anything sitting in that in the middle of the floor. It's you that's come in now. It's changing the way that the, the environment is set up. Make sure it's out of the way of what everybody's doing and that you're not creating a problem for everyone else. You want to be sure to have certain maintenance supplies on hand. And when you're working with printers and scanners, everyone's a little bit different. So you're going to want to check with the manufacturer's documentation so that you've got the right type of ink, you've got the right type of maintenance kits, you've got the right type of toner, and that it's always in your storage. So if anybody ever runs out, you've always got something to replace it with. And you'll find that there's other third-party options too for replacing the ink and replacing the toner. This can be good because it saves some money over the manufacturer's uh, printers and uh, and inkjet components, but it can also be bad because sometimes this is not the same quality as what you'd get from the manufacturer. So you want to be very careful that what you're spending your money on is going to give you the best bang for your buck. And also, the supplies themselves can be very proprietary. You know, you want to be sure that whenever you're working with a certain set of printers, if you buy 10 printers at a time, that's great. But if you buy two printers now and two printers later and then two printers after that, you may find that the supplies for each one of those is very different. And it's very difficult to keep all of that in inventory, and you have to make sure you're buying the right kinds. So make sure that whenever you do an upgrade to these printers or these scanners, that you're getting the kind that maybe you can use the same output, the same ink, the same toner cartridges across all of those, or at least have maybe two, maybe not as many as three, that you're going to want to keep track of at any particular time. In review, we've looked at how we could schedule maintenance to occur at a certain amount of time or make sure we have the things available when we're scheduling that maintenance. We've talked about ensuring a safe and suitable environment, not only for yourself, but for those around you. And we've talked about how maintaining supplies could be really useful for those printers and the scanners that are in your environment. For more a videos, to participate in our message boards and our online wiki, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.